This next video is show, showing how to use Angular UI Router with nested views. So here we've got the index.html file. Uh, this is very similar to the last application that we did, except um, instead of only having this single UI view on the main page, uh, inside of here we're going to be loading main.html as our template. And this is main.html right here. Uh, this is going to be seen as one state having this. This is going to be loading up a list of movies. So we have here. This JSON file is going to be loaded and you can see there's uh, a JSON file. It's got an array called series. Inside that there's three movies. So Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Those three are going to be loaded as buttons. If we look at main.html you can see that we're doing uh, an ng repeat here for these this div and I'm going through the movie series this is the array this is my uh, scope object this is the array inside there I'm looping through that to build three h2s with anchors inside or three divs with h2s with anchors inside and we are going to be referencing using ui state ref a new state called home dot list so this is our substate inside of home. This view is considered the home state and then if somebody clicks on one of these links we're going to be loading list inside of home and down here at the bottom here is the UI view where we're going to be doing that. So this is considered a nested view. In our app.js I've combined the routes and app.js files into one so I've got my main declaration here saying that I'm including UI router which we need to do for UI router instead of ng route and my config has my routing I've set my otherwise condition to home that is my home state I'm going to be loading main.html it's got its own controller main, con main controller and there's a new property in here called resolve now this isn't required for nested uh, views. It's just something that I wanted to show you. Uh, this can be very useful if you've got uh, some values that you need to call on. You've got some data that you want to fetch, you've got a service that you want to run, and your page kind of relies on that. In my case, I wanted to get the series.json file for this, and then for my other view, I'm going to get titles.json, which was my other file. And in this file, I've got, you can see there's the series titles, and then inside there there's an array called episodes, which has a list of all the episodes from the various movie series. So back to my routing. Resolve, as I was saying, it's a way to fetch data or fetch some information for the controller that the controller is going to want when it first starts up. It has an object, so Here's our object inside there. There's the end of the resolve. We can create a whole list of things. If I wanted to create something else inside here, I could. I could do something like that. Um, we don't need anything else. We're just going to be calling on this one property called movie list. It's going to be a function. We're passing in HTTP. That's going to be required because we're going to do an HTTP get. We're going to go off and fetch this. When that comes back, then I'm going to return the response, so the data that comes back from this. And this is going to be stored inside here. This is going to be the name of a provider. So what does that mean? Well, if we go over to our controller from main, Angular module, movie app, controller, there's the name. Now, in this one, I have put the square brackets. I don't have to, but I but I have in this case. So scope and movie list are the two things I passed in. Movie list, that was my provider. Back here, movie list, this is my provider. A provider is something that provides information, it provides data. And it can be a factory, it can be a service, uh, it can be as simple as a value or a constant. Uh, Angular has a little function called value or a method called value and you can pass in. It's, it's like declaring a variable and then you have access to it, but it's packaged as a provider. So I can put its name inside here and then use it here. There is a 
one-to-one -one mapping of the number of providers that we list and then the number of objects that accept those providers. So this is my variable that's going to hold the scope object. This is my variable that's going to hold the movie list provider. Now the movie list provider, I could call that x. It wouldn't make a difference. And down here in my code, I'd use x. What's important is the name is correct here. And the reason that we do this, um, we don't always have to use the same names here. We don't always have to put the square brackets and list off the array and put in these things. The reason we do this is when you minify your file, what happens is these variable names get overridden. So if I'm not minifying my file, those variables are going to exist elsewhere in my code and I'm going to be able to access them no problem. However, if I minify my file, the minifiers will rename all my variables and all my function arguments. So this will become A and this will become B. And if I don't have this list to map to them, then my code stops working because we don't know what A or B are. So my movie list provider was returning to me the result of that HTTP get call. So this is the HTTP get response. And then I want the data from that. The data from that is my movies object. I'm putting it inside of movies. So series.json. This is my, go back to my in here, scope.movies. Movies is that whole thing. Inside of movies, I have an array called series. So my scope dot movies back in main.html, the template, I can refer to this movies object, and I know inside of it there is an array called series. Movies dot series. Series is being mapped to the variable s. And this is what I'm looping through. And S represents each one of those movies. And each one has a title and an ID. And this is how we're passing it through. So now we're on to the nested view, the UI view here, which is going to load lists.html. My UI state reference is home. I'm inside home dot list. List is going to be loaded here. So this is kind of a sub-state, if you will. And it works a little bit different than the um, simple parameters that we had before. If we're using href, we'd write out the URL as normal. But using the UI state ref, it becomes like a, a little method that we're calling. And inside, we pass in a JSON object, and we list off all the parameters that we want. So movie ID uh, becomes my variable name, and movie series ID. So the one, two, three, those numbers come in here as it loops through these things. And then title is the title. All right, so let's look at the routing for that home.list. There's the state, home.list. So this was home, this is home.list. The URL, home, the URL is slash list slash my variable name that I'm using in the HTML. Um, this is what it's actually going to look like. It'll be pound sign, slash home, slash list, slash, and then a number, one, two, or three. List is the template I'm loading into the view that's nested inside of home. There's a view going to be called list. It's inside of this page. It's got its own controller, and I'm doing resolve again, except I'm calling the titles.json file and it's going to give me back an object called title list. This is my provider now, title list. All right, let's go look at the list controller. List controller, scope, state params, title list. There it is. There's our provider, and I just decided to use the same thing just for simplicity's sake. Scope, state params, state params, instead of route params, remember to get the data. So state params.movie ID. This movie ID is coming back from the route. Right there, movie ID in the URL. That's the name of our variable. Back into the list controller. 
So that's my variable in the state params, and I'm putting that into scope. So my scope is going to hang on to movie ID. Uh, I'm declaring some variables here, just checking to see if they exist. If they don't, I'm initializing them with some value, just so I don't get the weird curly brace variables written on the screen. And then scope.movies. I'm getting my providers data. Inside there, there's an array called movies, and I'm putting that into scope, just as scope.movies. Count the number so I can loop through. I do a for loop, and then for each one, I'm checking to see does the ID of the movie that I'm looking for in my array as I'm looping through them, I'm checking each one to see, okay, does your ID match scope movie ID, which is coming from state params movie ID? So if the two of them match, that's the one that was just clicked. And if it is, I'm going to get the movie name from that data, and I'm going to get episodes, which is an array that we can loop through inside of here. So there's movie name that we fetched, and then ng repeat going through episodes, and it's going to write out a list of all of the objects. So taking a look at the working sample, here's my three buttons. As I click on one, list of episodes in, there's movie name, and this is the list of movies inside there. So we can just click back and forth. And if you watch the URL, you'll see it does say home list two. Even though I'm still showing the main, home is giving me the main view, list is giving me the sub view, and three is being used as the variable that's going to render this. So this is a nested view. And all the code is provided inside the zip file that's on the Canvas page. Please have a look through that and let me know if you have questions.